Hi everyone, my name is Owen McGavin Owl and welcome to HYVA and one of the things I do on this blog is because the community, what we have here is we're all about being a virtual CEO, being able to run your business virtually, being able to you know hire employ employees or even virtual assistants from all around the world because the world is your platform because technology allows it and I'm continuously out there looking for good tools that can enable you as entrepreneur focus on your income producing activities and we all know that email sometimes can be a total suck and I found a tool a way find that I think you guys need to pay attention to and I got the CEO on here to talk more about this tool so everyone uh, help me uh, um, welcome Gerald Guralnik from a way find and Gerald Go ahead and introduce yourself to the community. Let's get started. Sure. Thanks. Uh, and thank you again so much for having me here. I, I really do appreciate it, um, Owen. Um, well, my name is Jared, as you as you said, and uh, my company is a Wayfind, and we help people to get away from their inbox. We do that by notifying them of the things that really matter. Like I just got a, uh, <laughs> actually just got a message right here uh, from Owen that was basically just telling me, you know, that he was already on Skype. Wow. Um, and that message came, and it said meeting in three minutes. I don't know if you saw that, I saw uh, it, but yeah. Wayfind, yeah. So Wayfind looked at my calendar and figured out that you were emailing me, and we were meeting right now. So it put the two and two together. So that's what our tool does: is notify people of urgent stuff, so you don't have to be interrupted constantly, nonstop. And uh, I'm actually doing this call from Washington D.C., which is where I was for a long time, but I'm out of San Francisco. And again, I'm just really happy to have you here. Uh, to, or rather to be here with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. And, and the thing is too is, you know, we're doing this via Skype. I'm in Maryland, so you, technology allows you to, you know, there's no need to actually be in person. You can use, you know, stuff like Skype to actually be in front of someone and have a conversation. And so my whole thing is when, when it comes to tools like yours, I'm always trying to figure out where did that need come from? Where, where did you see that need to, to create a tool like a Wayfind? Sure. Well, actually, I'm I'm actually in Maryland, and when I ran my my business out of College Park for the last eight years, um, we were working with government and law firms and such. And my my last company, what we did was we helped people to save time. That was our goal. We wanted to save all of our clients, each of the employees, their thirty minutes or more per day. And I did that for eight years. And what we found is, as the time went on, um, people were spending half their day in their inboxes. So we were trying to show them various time management things, but how useful was that when they spent their entire day pretty much in their inbox and maybe the rest of it maybe in Word or, in Out or Excel or something, but, but generally most of their day was spent in Outlook. So we wanted to figure out how can we reduce that time? How can we, to, how can we get them, much like you're focusing on with virtual assistants, how can we get these entrepreneurs or even just any, any person in a company to focus on their work, what they're paid to do, not just to respond to email all day? Um, and that's what, what led to a Wayfind. We wanted to reduce the interruptions that come from email all day long. And when I saw the tool, I was a little bit curious because I was like, I know Google has something called a uh, priority email. So I was like, how is this different from that? So let's know, how is that different? Sure. So priority inbox, what that does, first off, it's, you know, it's just for Gmail. We support Gmail and Exchange and things. But priority inbox, what it does is it'll, you know, it'll highlight the, the third or the half of the messages that are most important to you in your inbox. Um, so when you're in your inbox, priority inbox is great. Um, However, what we're doing is we're taking people out of the inbox. So when we're successful, people are living their lives or they're spending their, their time at work doing what they should be doing, and we're sending them a text message or pushing to their iPhone or, or calling them and reading them whatever it is that really matters to them now. So we're trying to get them out of the inbox, and we'll notify them and say one of every 100 messages or so, whereas priority inbox is you know taking half your inbox and saying when you're there, these are the things you should look at. So we work really well together, but they're very different. I, I like the way you, you make, make sure that I understood that point. And so we've understood the benefits, but like let's go into maybe some of the features as to what uh, you know the, the, anybody using this tool can expect from uh, uh, Wayfind, I guess. Sure. I mean, what they can expect is to to check their email less uh, instead of you know losing so much of their day to it. Um, what the actual features are is it looks for very specific things in a message. It could look for a sender. It could look for a topic. Um, I'll show you that when we dive into the tool. Um, and it can it can look for all kinds of other things. It can also, as I as you as I showed in this example, it can connect with your calendar and let you know if somebody that's on your calendar emails you right before or right at the start of an appointment. Um, and then it takes all of those images and, and then it gets all of those messages and the ones that really matter right now, it'll push those onto text message or to a voice call or to a push notification on iPhone or Android. Definitely. So let's dive into the demo because I'm sure the, the community right now is like, let's see this. So let's dive into the demo. Sure thing. Let me just uh, bring up my screen here. 
and you don't have to work at this point i will do a edit and cut off any conversation we're having in between now while while you're getting set up so okay and i have um, to take off my video feed because when you're doing screen share and i have my own video feed it it's on the band do you see do you still see me no i don't i just see your your photo um Yep. So I think we're we're all set. Uh, I guess what maybe we can maybe even start with is is just the the away find um, homepage here. Um, so are we all set? Yep, we all set. Okay. All right. So right now we're on awayfind.com. This is just the homepage. Uh, not too much here to, to show, except that you know this is kind of the description here. When you receive an urgent message, we'll turn that into a mobile device, vo voice call, IM, or even delegated to someone. Um, a quick example of that is uh, we have a browser plugin. For example, for Gmail, here's a message from one of my colleagues. What I could say is if Brian emails me in the next, oh, let's just say in the next week, since we're working on something tomorrow. Yeah. Um, what I want is I want it to push to my iPhone. Now you'd probably only have one or two options in here, no reason to have all of these options. And then I'd create this filter and that's it. So right when you're in your email, if you're ever on a topic that you realize is just really, really timely, you can just you know create an alert for it. Another way you can do the exact same thing is if you're, this is a message from my mom here about an article that <laughs> I had in Inc. Magazine yesterday, I was featured there. Um, if you um, when you get a, when I get a message from my mom, I might want it to to call me. I want want it to push to my iPhone, that sort of thing. So I would just click on the button, which uh, for whatever reason isn't pushing right now, and I'd click create this filter, and that would do that. I, I shouldn't be running three different away find accounts at the same time, um, but this can be installed right throughout your entire domain um, with one click. So that's just one of the ways it works. So we actually, you know, we do have a website. We do have all kinds of different things you can do in your product in our product on our website. But generally speaking, we're trying to do is we're trying to get people to not have to spend any time whatsoever in our website. Uh, and instead, they just interact right from their email product, whether that be Gmail, whether that be Outlook, whether that be iPhone or Android. Uh, and that's really where all the magic happens is it's just we're getting, you know, we're, they manage it from their email program, which takes almost no time. And, uh, and they receive the notifications wherever they are, either, you know, on a smartphone or in just any old SMS. Wow, I like that. And, and right now, let me, let me let me play devil's advocate for instance. Someone might say, "Okay, I love this tool, but what if I just get someone who's going like a personal assistant who you know is between my go between between my email and and myself? What would you say to that person?" Uh, I mean, there's a few different things. Uh, one, I mean, you obviously have to, you know, make that jump where you sort of trust someone to read all of your email, um, including your personal accounts, um, because the truth is, is things could come in. I mean, a lot of the messages I set up are, you know, from people that are important to me in my life that are not necessarily at work and are not necessarily emailing me there. And I don't know if I'd want my assistant. I do have a virtual assistant. I've had one now for three years. It's 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 wonderful. I mean, she's fantastic, but she doesn't read my email, you know. So. And I don't want her to. So that's that's the first thing. Um, the second part is, you know, this is a bit more timely and reliable. You know, your assistant um, isn't checking your email every five seconds. Uh, so true, yes, yes. Whereas if you're waiting on one particular project, if there's, you know, just some really important opportunity, um, it'll find it and it'll call you when you have that message and read it to you, or it'll text you with that message. So it's actually a lot faster than an assistant, and it's for better or worse, it's a lot easier to train. I'm not saying you have to go into <laughs> to all these things, but take a look here, for example, at the bottom. Um, you see, and again, most people don't need to do all of this, but let's just say I was looking for a message from. I don't know, from Steve at somewhere.com. Um, I could, you know, be looking for a message room. I could even say only if it has, you know, the keyword in it, say, you know, let's just say Calorama project. Let's just say that was the project. Um, but only in the next week. You know, now you could tell your assistant to look for a message from Steve that has that relates to this project for the next week, but you know, A, it's gonna cost you a lot to have them constantly checking and looking yeah. for it. And B, they could miss it. Um, or it might come later, you know. So so you can I could I could just create this little rule here. I'll say I want it to send me a push notification any time of the day, or maybe, you know, maybe I, I don't ever want it to be on weekends. So you can create all of these rules, whereas I assume your assistant isn't working, you know, after hours for, you know, with you all the time. Whereas, you know, this this could happen at 9 p.m. at night when your assistant isn't working. Um, what we're trying to do is prevent you from having to check your email so often, and that doesn't mean you should have your assistant checking it all the time. You should rely on technology to do what technology is good for. You know why I love this tool is because it really helps to articulate the point of you know delegation where it's like outsourcing to somebody and then automating things that you can automate. So in this case where email takes a lot of time, and you, for instance, even if you had an assistant helping you with your email, 
you don't want to have them doing all this uh, redundant stuff if you can just create a rule set using a wayfind to you know, kind of automate everything so that it's automated. I, I also assume that you know you can actually uh, delegate some of the automation to uh, say for instance instead of getting you getting the responses it's going to be sent to your assistants for instance is, is, is can you add teams to your account yeah absolutely so when you create those rules um you see here i could automatically forward it to my support team for example okay so you could create as many of those as you want so a lot of people do use this um as a matter of fact a lot of support teams <laughs> use this to monitor the support account and send it to a lot of different people on their team um, that's not specifically what our tool is designed for but you can absolutely have messages automatically pushed to other folks. Um, and, and actually, one of the neat things about our tool is that it um, it actually it comes with this thing called a contact form, um, which isn't necessarily something you'd have to use. Apparently, I can't uh, copy and paste just right. Um, so what instead I could do is I can just go to awayfind.com slash Jared. And what you see is there's this little contact form here. And what's nice about this is instead of giving out my cell phone or my phone number when I'm out of the office I instead yeah. give out this and if people fill this out what it'll do is it'll then send a text message to my cell phone but where it gets interesting and again this is only if you want to take the time to do this you could set it up so that different categories can go to different people so if there's for example an away find issue I don't necessarily need to be alerted about it, but maybe my whole support team does. So they could receive a text message or a phone call when something happens with a wayfind that's worthy of, of interrupting me. Um, so instead of giving people my phone number, which basically, you know, as soon as somebody calls me, all of a sudden their problem becomes my problem. Whereas instead I give them this contact form and then, you know, their problem, you know, becomes whoever else's problem I want to send it to. And since it's asynchronous, in other words, since it goes out now, but it's not like a live communication at that point, they can then respond however is, you know, whenever it's appropriate. Um, so this is much better for me than giving out a phone number. Definitely. I, I love everything I've been seeing so far. Is there any other thing you want to share with the community so far in, 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 uh, in this demo? Um, I can show you stuff if I can switch back over to video. Oh, definitely. Okay. Let me get my own video set up too. <laughs> okay. Can you see me now? I can. Let me do okay, the same thing. And we're waiting for the video feed to come in. Okay. Okay. We're back in. So now you've got me. Um, so we have this feature here um, in our iPhone app. Um, it's called uh, waiting for an email or waiting for now. So if you look right here at my screen, you see that it has the ability to type in a name and then it has a timer on it. So let's say, for example, I were to type in, oh, I don't know, let's go back to the Steve example. I can type in Steve, and I could say 30 minutes. So we see that Steve and 30 minutes are up there. Yeah, bring it a little bit closer. Let me see. Well, I just clicked the start button. That's all okay. you really have to see. Okay. Yeah. So That's right it. now, during this timer, if somebody with the name Steve emails me, an alarm will actually go off on my phone. Um, and I can actually even test this if you want with, with your name, if you'd like. Uh, we go can do ahead. that afterwards let's, let's with the video it. thing. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me just pause for one second here. Uh, do, 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 do. And so far, I must say, this has been one of the most interactive demos I've had. Wow. Everything is just being shown live. I like this. Not a problem at all. I'm just typing in Owen and pressing start. Um, so I've typed in Owen. I've pressed start. And now, if you wouldn't mind just sending me an email, um, then my phone will, will go off. It'll probably be later in our interview that it'll, it'll go off. It'll take, usually it takes fact, about two or three minutes. But Give, give me a second. Let me... I usually turn off my browser when we're doing the interview so that I don't eat up brand no bandwidth. So let me log back into Gmail and then send you an email. And what I like uh -huh. this is people can actually, as a result of watching this interview, have a live feel for you know what this tool is going to do. So let okay. me. You want me to send you an, an email to uh, your, your 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 email, or is there a specific email you want me to send to? Or? No. Oh, actually, you know what? This is a test account. <laughs> so maybe I will give you a, uh, a specific thing. I realize that we're in a test account. So, yeah, actually, you know what I'll do is I'll Skype you the address to send it. Okay. Um, good, good call. Sorry about that. <laughs> that would have been a failed demo. <laughs> yeah. So There you go. Okay, I got the email. I do use this on my own account, but it just so happens that I'm, uh, I've been testing some things. Okay, so let me, I, I got the email and I, I'm going to send it. And mm -hmm. just say uh, subject hi it's Owen hi mm -hmm. hi it's Owen no problem and, and yeah while you're sending that I'll just I'll just point out that that was the iPhone version of it and we also have Android up here so you'll see there's a notification in my Android um, I don't know if I can get that to display very clearly should I should I go ahead and uh, close up my browser 
Yeah, you can close your browser, sure. It doesn't matter. Um, it's been sent. But I was just pointing out that we also, we also have the Android version of it. And what you saw earlier was just SMS. So it doesn't matter whether you have a smartphone or not. This will, it'll just sort of work. Um, Definitely. It's nice if you have a smartphone, though, because then you can actually reply to the message um, as opposed to having to go back into your inbox, which was something people wanted for a long time before we had that. So. Well, I, one of the things I always want to do when we have demos with you know, entrepreneurs like yourself is also get people to, uh, on, to know the mindset and also to get to know the person behind the, 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 the tool itself. So after the demo, we usually go into the point of, you know, my question now to you is how exactly this whole journey of entrepreneurship, where did it start for you? Sure. Um, well, when I finished school, I was actually at University of Maryland, and uh, when I finished school at 20, I, I didn't know what, you know what was the right thing for me, so I actually started a company, and um, that company, as I mentioned before, was about saving people 30 minutes or more per day. It was called Software Efficiency Training Consulting. Uh, and you know, for, for eight years, I, I, we built tools and we provided training that taught people that were pretty good how to become kind of rock stars at seemingly basic applications like Word and Outlook and Excel. And again, we saw people spending half their day in their inboxes. Um, so you know, AwayFind was a direct response to that. I actually sold that other company this past summer, uh, raised money for AwayFind. Um, but in terms of why I guess I'm in this particular space, because for me, I'm more about the impact than, I mean, I love entrepreneurship. I've worked for myself forever, and I, I organize a lot of groups to help entrepreneurs. But, but really, to me, it's more about impact. It's really more about how can I make a difference. And what gets me excited is attention management, because I feel like technology has become an obstacle to happiness and to getting things done, even though it was supposed to be a vehicle. So I'm trying to turn that back. And I think email happens to be the, the lowest hanging fruit or the biggest barrier because it is what interrupts us most and it is what, what is most universally um, sort of, I don't want to say the bane of people's existence in the workplace, but it, you know, it definitely comes, it's, it's, it's the most present problem, I think. Um, so that's why we're trying to deal with that, even though it doesn't seem exciting to work with email solutions, I think they can have a really large impact. Definitely. And while we are talking about interruptions that people have, one of the biggest interruptions I'm having personally is social media websites like Twitter and Facebook. I love them. And I'm trying to you know, figure out, you, know, you have any ideas on how one can really uh, you know, zone into what you need to be doing on there as opposed to just being interrupted by stuff like that? I mean, there's a few things. Um, the first thing is to turn off all the notifications. If someone posts on your wall, if someone comments on a photo, neither your iPhone nor your email now should tell what happens. So the very first thing, no matter what, turn off all the notifications on Facebook or on Twitter except for direct messages. Or ex and by direct messages on Twitter, I actually mean the DMs. And on Facebook, I mean the, um, you know, just personal messages. Those, those should, they shouldn't send you a text message, but what they should do is they should show up. I'm losing you for a minute. Uh, it's not a I, I didn't hear what you said because Skype, we're having a delay. What did you say again? Sorry about that. Can you hear so, me? Can you hear me? Hello? I can, can hear you. Oh, because the Skype... You know what? Let's, let me do this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to end this call and call you back so we get a better connection. Okay, it seems it came up. Can sure, you fine. hear me? I can hear you fine. Okay, so go ahead. Sorry about it. Go ahead. I'll, I'll oh, no problem. This out. Go ahead. No, no problem at all. Um, so I'll start over. Um, you had asked uh, social media how, how that can be, uh, you know, more... How can you can be more productive with it and not be constantly interrupted. So I'll start with Definitely. that. Definitely. Um, yeah. With Facebook, the first recommendation that I give to people is to turn off all notifications for everything except for direct messages that are sent specifically to you. And same thing with Twitter. You don't need to get an email or a text of any sort or any kind of push notification when someone you know, replies to you or uh, maybe with a reply, but certainly not with just, just you know, just like just general messages from, from regular folks. Um, so just generally turning off all notifications that are not specifically directed at you. Um, on social media. And then when you go into social media, when you jump into Facebook or Twitter, the truth is you are going to search for you and you are going to look at the notifications on Facebook. You're not going to forget, just like you're not going to forget to check your email. Um, but instead, make sure that what's in your email and what's in those notifications is, is stuff that you have your time. And then I would recommend you know, spending 20 minutes or 15 minutes every few hours and diving in and really giving it your all. What doesn't work is looking, seeing something, and entering into a rabbit hole, and then doing that every five minutes, because you end up in lots and lots of rabbit holes. Um, instead, what you want to do is you want to say, hey, you know what? I'm actually going to make this next 15 minutes email, or I'm going to make this next 15 minutes social media, and then just own it, and go in there and participate and do that. And Yeah, sure, you might come up with a tweet when you're not in that 15 minutes, and then you know just post the tweet. 
but don't don't log in and don't look at everything. Just post it. Uh, so when you're writing stuff, it makes sense to hit the send button anytime. But when you're actually trying to listen and participate, you should do that, you know, all at once, and then just get the heck out. Step in the stream and step out of it. Definitely. And one of the things we I always learn from from entrepreneurs I interview is, you know, stories that they had about challenges when they started their business, you know, and how they solved it. Anyone come to mind that you will, you know, don't mind sharing with the community? What types of problems? <laughs> business related. Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> business, you know, stuff. You, you said when you started your business, you know, you, you, this whole journey of being able to save people time didn't just start with a the wayfinder. There's been a transition from you trying to figure out the different solutions and softwares out there up till now. So I'm yeah. just trying to figure out. Sure. One of my biggest challenges was transitioning from a service oriented business where I had, you know, just clients and, you know, I might have 10 in a month or I might have a government agency and that would keep me busy for a few months. Um, to a product business where ultimately we need tens of thousands if not millions of paying customers ultimately but tens of thousands of paying customers and maybe millions of free customers um, that's what we need to succeed and transitioning from that path and here's the uh, alert by the way oh wow finally came I was waiting for that <laughs> that's good. well this is in a test environment so it took a lot longer than it would have if it were in my production environment so I apologize yeah. for that um, but you know, there was the message showed up there. I swiped across, and then it actually brought up the email, but right within our application. Awesome, awesome. So, um, but you did you did get it, and I apologize again for the delay on that. But uh, this is just in my test environment where it checks email every five minutes instead of every minute and a half. So it's different. Um, but yeah, I, I'd say the, the, the biggest challenge for me was definitely see just how big of a deal an interruption is, how much it throws oh, you yeah. off. You know? Um, which is what we're working on. Um, <laughs> the biggest challenge for me was was probably switching to a product company. You know, recognizing that when you're trying to work on a product, there's so much to that ecosystem. Um, you know, it's the marketing, it's hiring people with more skills, it's having a, a fully automatic onboarding process, it's understanding how do you can build a user experience that that serves users themselves as opposed to something where I mean, the truth is, if I'm here handholding, um, I can have something that doesn't do that much, and I can sort of get you to work with it, but when, when you know, you're just coming there on your own, I need to be able to convince you to buy, I need to be able to give a very, you know, uh, you know, forgiving and friendly, you know, setup process and all that kind of stuff, and it's just a whole different ecosystem, and it's also an environment where you're not making money while you're learning and while you're building. I mean, you might, but generally speaking, there's a lot more research and development before there's revenue. So how you transition from one to the other was, was probably our biggest challenge, and it was a very expensive and long journey. <laughs> and, and during that process of transition, what did you find worked the most for you guys? Uh, I mean, I had to, I mean, for me, my general approach to learning things is to surround myself with people who are successful in that particular endeavor. So I got to know a lot of, uh, you know, startup entrepreneurs and learned about what startups are like. I mean, I, I, I ran a, you know, my small B2B consulting business with nine people or eight people or whatever was, it wasn't a startup. Some people think startups just mean small businesses. It's very different. Startup implies high risk with potential high reward. And that's what we are right now. So surrounding myself with people who had been successful in that sphere was definitely the biggest thing. And then, of course, you know, you read and you learn and you iterate and, things like that. But ultimately, having the right people around me so that I knew the information I was being provided with and that the motivation was, you know, was sort of, was toward doing things that were valuable for them as opposed to things that worked in my old life, um, that, that was great. So surround yourself with five people that are where you want to be and you'll become them. I really believe that. And one of the things I noticed about you guys is that you guys are having a lot of press right now, and I'm figuring, you know, trying to figure out, you know, what are you guys doing? That you know, people, are, you know, keep talking about you guys. Maybe we can learn from that as well. I really believe you just treat people well, and you meet a lot of people, and then things happen. Um, it does make sense to outreach. I mean, we don't have a PR firm. Um, and to be honest, the recent things we've had have been a little bit more serendipity than than outreach. We've done outreach in the past. If we have a major launch, then yeah, you might expect to see us on like a TechCrunch or a GigaOM or something. In that case, where we actually just contact people and we might know them just from being around the industry, but it's not like we're special, you know, than more than any other startup. But the things we've had lately have been, you know, just just from having been out there for so long. And by out there, I don't mean the product. I mean me. All this stuff is about. Oh, you should talk to Jared for this, or oh, you should talk to so and so for that. And um, we just got recommended. So that article that was in Inc. Yeah, that was. That was something, you know, they contacted us and then we contacted, and they said, we want this to be in a user's voice. Do you have a user you'd recommend? And I was like, yeah, actually, here's somebody you should talk to. 
um, and then that that's how it worked. So yeah, and, and those times where it, there's actually been an outreach that you guys were actually you know, launching something, uh, I was figuring out if you can share with us some of the things you do when you do indeed have a launch that you're doing an outreach so that we can oh. learn from that. Again, the biggest thing is maintaining relationships. That will that will make anything, whether it's a launch or unplanned, just work. Uh, but you know, so I mean, it's not it's not about following the steps. I mean, if Obama picks up the phone and calls you, you don't need to know anything more because you know <laughs> you're going to take the call. And I, I think that when I email somebody, uh, it helps that I'm the CEO. Of the I lost, the next I, thing is I lost you there for a minute. Skype. Is messing us up, but you said oh, it I'm helps sorry. that it helps that. Oh, I said I'm sorry. It helps that I'm the CEO of the company as opposed to just like an intern who's contacting press. You know that that's a big help. Uh, but then at that, they're going to look look at sort of me online and figure out whether I'm somebody that's worthy of their time. So, invest in media or invest in making sure your LinkedIn is strong. Whatever it is that when people look you up, they realize this dude's legit or his company is legit. And a lot of that is just online presence. So, you know, I could tell you what I do to reach out to people, but I really don't think it's about what you put in the email. I mean, you can, all you can do is, I mean, all this stuff is basically just like degrees to which you can get disqualified. You know what I mean? Like, if you don't have any presence online, you're disqualified. If you write an email where you're swearing at them, you're disqualified. There's lots of things you can do at any point. And yes, you should write an email that's at least pretty good and there's lots and lots of articles online about how to outreach to people and for me I tend to keep it pretty short uh, I might link to the actual you know release or the blog post um, and I definitely make a reference to something of theirs in the past uh, and while you could say that that's successful you know it might work half the time or a third of the time for me um, what's a lot more successful is having met that person and then having just a friendly you know outreach to that person and you don't even have to do any kissing up you just you know, you just know the person and you ask for it. So work on the relationships before you need them. And then people will cover you. Thank you very much. I mean, before I let you go, I always try and find out from entrepreneurs, you know, we're all busy, but you know, you've taken the time to even you know, show us the demo and all that. Why even do this? Because we have all, you know, all busy entrepreneurs. Well, if you don't take the time to talk to people, then you're going to fail at the thing we just talked about. I mean, isn't that what you just said? You want to get PR, you want to get users, you want to get attention. I mean, you got to show up, and this is part of showing up. I mean, I, I mean, it's not. I mean, I don't think you're implying that you're not worthy of of my time, or vice versa. You know, that I'm not worthy of your time, or whatever. You know, you, you are. You know, I looked. You know, you you wrote an email to me. You reached out, and I, I looked at what you've done, and you've done a you know a great job and high quality. And of course, I'm going to say yes to that. I mean, when somebody reaches out to you and says, "I want to make you look better," you should always take that offer. Uh, I suppose there'll be some point. All these kinds of interviews, but. These, these sorts of things, I always say yes. Uh, I, I have nothing to lose. I mean, sure, it's a half an hour of my life, but I don't know. At the point where you don't have a half an hour of your life to give to people who want to help you, I think at that point, you're doing the wrong thing. Wow. Jared, I, I really appreciate you taking this interview, and thank you very much. How thank best so can much. anyone listen so far? You know, how, how best can I get a hold of you? Uh, you can definitely tweet to me. I'm Technotheory on Twitter. That's a good way. Um, and uh, on AwayFind, I'm Jared at AwayFind.com. I don't want tons of email, but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Twitter or AwayFind uh, are, are good ways to, to reach me. But it's Jared, J-A-R-E-D, at AwayFind. So. And everyone, check out AwayFind and come back and let us know how you know what you think about it. I love the tooling. I want you guys to you know, check it out. Thank, Thank you very you so much, Jared. Appreciate the support. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed today's interview. And before you go, I want you to do me a favor. I'm trying to build my community of entrepreneurs who find my content useful on Facebook so we can engage, you know, have discussions live right there on Facebook. And to get to my page on Facebook, you go to www.facebook.com forward slash H-Y-V-A-S-S-I-S-T-A-N-T. And again, it's www.com. What am I saying? No, it's www.facebook.com forward slash H-Y-V-A-S-S-I-S-T-A-N-T. And when you get there, what you're going to do is look for the uh, a button that says like, and you click on that button, and then basically you uh, become a, a fan of the page. It's that simple. You don't even have to leave me your email. Just click on the button that says like. And again, the page to go to is www.facebook.com forward slash h-y-v-a-s-s-i-s-t-a-n-t and that stands for hive assistance real easy i look forward to seeing you on facebook have a great day